Thanks for joining us today for today's Lunch and Learn. Um, today, our topic is Creative Communication, a Path to Student Engagement. Um, today, your facilitators are myself, Melanie Farrell, and my partner, Barb Vinyl. And um, I'm going to be doing some of the facilitating, and Barb's going to be doing some of the moderating. And there's a few more DLCs that are joining us as well, and they, you might see them jump in the chat to help any moderation. But feel free during today's Lunch and Learn, if you have questions, to put them in the chat. Um, and I believe, Barb, you opened up the Q&A as well. Um, yes, I did. Thank you. And if you also have questions in the activity center, um, the activity center are those three shapes, the triangle, the square, and the circle. If you go into the activity center, you'll also see a Q&A area. Um, the Q&A is a great place if you want to post a question. Um, and during the presentation, we will try to get to those Q&As as well. Um, but the nice part about the Q&A is those are recorded. So if you ever want to use them with your students and you want to open up your Q&A during a live session with your students, those questions will be recorded in a spreadsheet that will later be sent to you. So there is some benefit in opening up the Q&A because we all know in the chat when you're um, teaching to students and you're moving fast through information and your students are posting questions in the chat, sometimes it's hard to follow up on those questions. Sometimes they get lost in the chat. So that way, if you want record of questions and questions, you can open up that Q&A for them as well. Okay, so we're gonna do a quick check-in and some of you have already found this check-in. This check-in is located in the poll that is also in the activity center. So if you um, click on the activity center icon, in your Google Meet, that will open up and you'll see polls and you'll have the opportunity to let us know how you are feeling today. Um, this poll was created before you showed up today. Um, we just put these little emojis in there. It's just a quick way to um, just get a pulse or a feel for the room. Um, this is also a very quick activity you can do with your students as well when you're in a live Google Meet. Um, and as you can see, we um, as participants can see the uh, results. If you wanted to use this with your students, you could hide the results if there was something that you wanted to be um, more of a private poll, something that you as the teacher only wanted to see, or you could share the results. And then you can turn the poll on and off throughout, um, like you can launch polls and then pull the poll back out and unlaunch it um, so that students don't see it. Again, polls are a great way to get quick feedback from your students. And then at the end of the Google Meet, again, you are sent a spreadsheet that goes to your email with the polling results. So that's another quick way to grab feedback from um, the people in your Google Meet. So let's see what we have today. We have some smiley faces and some heart eyes and uh-oh, some tears coming out of the eyes and maybe um, feeling a little bit broken or um, beat up a little bit with, the, with um, the bandage on the head. So I think we have a mix in the room. Hopefully by the end of today's Lunch and Learn, we have more smiles than bandages. So thanks for participating and thank you for being here today. Um, Barb and Annette, who are moderating the chat, if at any time there's a question in there that I should pause for, just hop on in and let me know because I probably won't be moderating the chat as well as you guys will be. No worries. You go ahead and, and present, Melanie, and we will handle the back channels. Okay. So here we go. I want you guys to look at this picture alongside me. And I, I want you just to take this picture in and I want you to look at it and think about it and um, think about what the story behind this picture might be. Some of you may have seen this um, possibly in your own homes. You may have seen this possibly in um, during a classroom 
um, time when we were back face to face in our brick and mortar buildings. Um, so this might not be a completely unfamiliar picture to you. And now let's take a look at this picture. And let's look at this entire picture. And what are we noticing in this picture? Again, you may have seen something very similar um, in your classrooms, in your school buildings, pre-COVID, of course. Um, but what story is this picture telling? Today we're gonna to talk about, and we're gonna focus, and we're gonna to think together about this picture and how we can get to this picture. And just a little side story, um, the star of these pictures is my son. Uh, my son many times does his homework and he looks like this in my house. Um, but when I see him shining, in school and he looks like the um, picture to the right. It really uh, brings warmth to my heart. And I know um, for those of you who are here, who are educators, um, our goal is to, um, to see more of the picture on the right. So the, these are the images we're gonna focus on today. Today's session goal, uh, we have three goals um, that we're gonna focus in on. We're going to talk a little bit about cognitive engagement. We're going to um, analyze creative communicators. And then we're going to reflect on the importance of student investment. Some of these concepts and ideas are not going to be new to you. Um, what I'm hoping today is that we can all be in this space and we can be thinking together. Um, and then how we can act upon this moving forward. So cognitive engagement. If you were in last week's Lunch and Learn, uh, last week's Lunch and Learn really took a deep dive into the three types of engagement, um, emotional, cognitive, and behavioral. Um, these three types of engagement are um, feeling, thinking, and doing. And these, these pieces of engagement are more of um, what the teacher is doing in the learning spaces, um, how the teacher can engage the student in certain tasks. Um, someone might refer to this as sort of the bells and whistles of what the teacher um, is providing for the students. And these bells and whistles can sometimes tire us out as educators. And I'm thinking some of you might be shaking your head. Yes, I'm completely exhausted in this environment. It's new, it's different. Um, so how can we move from a place where um, we are the ones providing all of these engagement pieces for our students and involve our students um, more in this process? Today, we're gonna focus in um, a little bit more on the cognitive piece, um, more so than the emotional and the behavioral. So I want us to pause and I want us to think together about an assignment or a project that you were proud of or excited about. You can think back to a time in elementary school, middle school, high school, college, or even recently, something that you worked on or you created uh, that you were really excited about, proud of. And now thinking about that project or that, that assignment, um, what motivated you? Like, why did you wanna work on that? There was a reason that you felt motivated to work on that assignment, task, project. And two, and you know, you may already have thought of this, but if you are emotionally invested in something, then you're gonna think more deeply about it. So, um, you know, be, be thinking, you know, what, what has resonated with you? So let's take a minute to connect with each other. And in our chat, um, in just a few words or a statement, if you could um, put into the chat why 
were you motivated for that assignment or project? What was it that um, made you want to keep working on it or excited to turn it into the teacher or couldn't wait to share with your classmates? What, what were some of those things that really deep down made you want to um, share? Yes, exciting and interest, collaboration, creative and individualized, yes. I love the comment uh, that Michelle made. Um, I've always preferred the discovery and the, the fact discovery. that it's not about grades, but more about self-discovery. I really like that. That's a great comment. Yes. Great. Current trend to connect with students. I liked learning more about the topic. Yes. So I liken this, this is a phrase that I often refer to as refrigerator art. So picture um, the student getting off the bus and they're so excited about something that they created in class that they cannot wait to run into the house and tape it onto the refrigerator. Or in the olden days, we use Magnus. But put that on the refrigerator because you wanted to share that or, or the, the, the child or the person so excited wanted to share that on the refrigerator. So this is refrigerator art. Today, we're going to be talking about refrigerator art. Okay. And even as an adult, there are projects that I work on that I'm so excited. Um, obviously, I can't just scoop it up and put it on my refrigerator, but it's something I'm excited that I want to share uh, with the people in my house. So that's our refrigerator art. All right, so we're leaning into this cognitive um, engagement and we're focusing on thinking today and this is the um, definition of cognitive engagement and um, I will read the slide out loud certainly you can read it as well with me but cognitive engagement relates to what the learner is thinking about in the classroom students should be thinking about the content lesson or activity and not something outside of the classroom easier said than done right? Cognitive engagement or thinking about something moves us to action. So that last part of that definition, cognitive engagement or thinking about something moves us to action. That's where we're going to live today in this presentation. What is it that moves our students to action? Okay, so we're going to be thinking through that. Creative communicator is one way or one um, area that we can focus in on that can help students move to that action. Uh, the North Carolina Digi Digital Learning Standards are standards that our state adopted um, this past year. Uh, one of the learning standards is creative communicator. So today when I'm um, showing you some practical tasks that students have created, um, they lean into this creative communicator and they are examples of creative communicators. If you want to learn more about these standards, there are links um, off of our slide deck that take you to the North Carolina Digital Learning Standards for Students to learn more. Here is the creative communicator standard. Um, the standards are listed as um, the main standard and then there are four substandards to this one. Again, I'm not here to give you a full lesson on the digital learning standards for students, but I am pointing out that these are important and you might be hearing more about it as our um, year progresses. All right, now we're getting to the fun stuff. So here's an example of a, of a creative communicator. Um, this student is in first grade and this student's task was to demonstrate what push and pull looks like. I'm gonna share this video with you in just a minute, but I did wanna point out the digital tools that were used were Google Classroom and Flipgrid. We have a link here to Flipgrid if you want to learn more about ways in which to use Flipgrid with your students in your classroom. 
but here is just one task that this um, student completed. Here I'm interviewing the push and pull. I'm pushing this huge dice towards you and pulling this big dice towards me. All right, so besides that that is the most adorable thing you may have seen today, um, this is a perfect example of this student has been creative. So they use technology and they communicated and it's a video. So as the teacher, you can easily see, did they understand the concept? And you can see he was pushing and pulling the object. And it was one way in which he was involved as a first grader to share his information. And you can see he looks pretty smiley in this. So he's engaged and he's probably invested at this point in the learning. And we're gonna come back and talk more about investment after we get through some of these um, other great examples. And so many of our students really, and I think teachers too, um, maybe really enjoy the chance to be uh, kind of famous, you know, and, and you notice that he chose to use this breaking news, you know, that was really important to him. So he was really invested in uh, wanting to, to show what he knows about this concept. That's right. And here's another uh, grade one example. This one is not a video. This one is a slide deck example. In this slide, the teacher posted the directions on the first slide, and then the student was given the opportunity to create, the task was to create their own compost poster. So even though she gave an example of what some of the things they might want to include on their poster, you can see that this student went to um, search for images within Google Slides so that they are um, free to use. And then he labeled them. He has his title. So although for a first grader, um, these are tasks that, you know, for our older students might be very simple, but for a first grader, it was an opportunity for them to be creative and share that back out with not only his teacher, but his classmates as well. And these uh, digital tools that were used are Google Classroom and Google Slides. Again, a link to Google Slides um, to our Tools for All Learners page if you want to know more about Google Slides. And here is a video. This is a great uh, student from grade eight. Um, and this is a video about the Bohr model of boron. I'm not saying that any of these, any of this work, uh, I'm not grading this work, so I'm not sure if this is correct um, in, in the output of, of this video, but it's a very good example of how this student explained it. So I'm gonna click on this one. In my drawing of this Bohr model of boron, you can see how it has five protons, five neutrons, and five electrons. Protons have a positive charge while neutrons have a neutral charge and electrons have a negative charge. I know that it has these numbers of protons, neutrons, and electrons because its atomic number is five. Therefore, there's five protons and electrons. Its mass number is 10. So 10 minus five, you know that there's five neutrons. To show the electrons in the first ring, there's two. And then there is, in the second ring, or the valence ring, there's three valence electrons, which is the outermost energy ring. All right, so as you can see, um, the students used uh, Google Drawings, and then they used Screencastify to then explain their work. And if there's any science teachers out there, I'm not sure if that was um, a correct answer or not, but um, certainly the learning process for the student and the teacher in order to see their work um, was an option. Um, there are some creative pieces in this. As you see, as the students get older, um, more of the options open up for them. Um, I always liken it to, um, we don't ask our first graders to go out and run a marathon. We have to teach our you know, our kids to crawl and walk and run 
and jog before they can get to the to the big marathon at the end. And this is an example of a creative communicator in grade eight. This is from the EL curriculum. And the task was to create a film based on the memoir, A Mighty Long Way. Um, the student used uh, Google Slides to turn in the assignment. I mean, Google Classroom to turn in the assignment, Google Slides and Screencastify. If I was to make a film based off the events that took place at Central High School in Arkansas relating to the Little Rock Nine and the adversities they faced, I would choose the pictures on page 27 and 46 in the book Little Rock Girl to portray the events that took place. I would choose the song DNA for the main soundtrack. In the photograph on page 46, it shows the mob Carlotta saw on her way to school. On page 70, Carlotta describes this mob with, with every step, the hooting and hollering grew louder. As we got closer to the 14th Street, I glanced towards the mobile gas station, a mob of people that stretched as far as I could see. This picture shows a young. So I'm going to pause there. That one's a little bit longer, so you can watch that one later if you'd like. Um, what I love about this one is um, after the student created this screencast, this was then shared with their classmates. Um, and so each of the classmates were able to create the screencast and it didn't have to be in a live environment and then share it out with their class with their classmates. Um, so this was also an assignment um, that gave students in eighth grade um, some creative uh, room to put this together and still follow the assignment guidelines. Uh, this next one, uh, I'm the star in this video. This was a video that was created from um, a high school uh, assignment that my son just recently did in health science. And the assignment was um, a fairly simple assignment. It was to create an informational video. What I loved about the creative freedom in this one is the student could create a video as long as they met um, the list of things that needed to be in the video. They could have chosen a person in the family as their model. They could have chosen a doll or a stuffed animal. They could have created um, a drawing or uh, more of like an artwork and then did a screencast over that. So they did have a lot more creative um, outlets in, in how they wanted to put this uh, video together. And um, on the next slide, on slide 21, it is the actual um, parameters of the project um, that's just there for your reference, but that has the actual um, CTE health science objective and it, what had to be involved in the video so that you can see the correlation of the two things. And I'll have to say, because I know this was, um, you know, I wear two hats in my house, probably more than two hats, but one hat is um, a, a digital learning coordinator and the other hat is oftentimes a parent. And so when my son asked me to be part of his assignment and to be the model for his uh, video, um, the learning not only took place in our home, but it brought family and that community piece back into his work. And when I asked my son, um, tell me about something, tell me about your refrigerator art. What, what were you excited about? And this was one of the projects that he um, shared with me as his refrigerator art. So I felt that sharing this with you today was also a good example for you to see um, some of that creative communicator um, in this project. All right, so we're gonna pause here for a minute. Um, if you guys have any questions about any of those projects that you just saw in ways that students are creative and communicate their learning or complete their tasks, um, we can pause here. If you have anything you want to put in the chat, any question you might have um, about those, um, those ideas or projects that we just shared. In the slides, if you look down in the speaker notes, um, there are also, there's also links and information in the speaker notes for you to look at as well. And while we're pausing here too, <clears throat> excuse me, Melanie, um, I, 
when Melanie and I were talking about this and putting together this presentation, um, it was interesting. She meant we got to this slide and we were talking about, you know, how were you invested in, in something that you had done um, and how could, did you share it out? And I went back to a project that I remember doing when I was in high school. Um, no computers were not, in, well, personal desktop computers were not invented yet. Um, we used abacuses and slates, you know, it was a long time ago. But anyway, but I, but I vividly remember um, being uh, in English class and saying, well, we have to do this book report on the Scarlet Letter. And I didn't want to just write another book report. So my friend and I decided, I'm a musician, and my friend and I decided to write a song about the book. And then we convinced our teacher that the right thing to do was to have the whole class come down to the music room and we would perform the song in the music room for the class. And this was back in, I'm gonna, I now give myself an age here, but this was back in 1975, I think it was. Um, so uh, even without the technology piece, that investment in what we did for that quote book report um, I remember more about that book than any other book I've read because we did that piece of it. So I think that as you're thinking about ways to get students involved in things, giving them the options of what what matters to them, you know, what int interests them a lot, um, as many of you mentioned earlier in the chat. Yeah. Thanks, Barb. And I think um, some of us are, are now thinking back to some of those projects or tasks or things from our um, maybe childhood even that we remember. And those are our pieces of refrigerator art. So, um, so I, I think, uh, thank you for sharing that. So let's look at this next slide. Um, this next slide is having us think through ways in which students can share to larger audiences. Part of students being invested is thinking about the audience that they share their work with. Um, certainly the audience is, their number one audience is their teacher that they turn their assignment into, but the audience can be larger than their teacher. So I want you to think through um, ways in your classroom that you may have um, had your students share out their work um, and be thinking through what ways can students share what they know to a larger audience outside of their teacher? So the creative part is important. It's very important to give students the opportunity to build those tasks, to uh, fulfill, to complete the task in a creative way, but it's also important in how they communicate what they know and what they've learned. And that audience is another piece to that. So in the chat, if you could um, share your thoughts with us on ways in which students can share their work to a larger audience. Yes. Oh yeah, podcasting. Oh, podcasting. Sharing it to um, grade level, elementary, content area for middle high, specials. Mm -hmm. What about platforms? Um, you know, Paul mentions podcasting, um, but what kind of platforms might you have already used? Yeah, Google, mm -hmm. Cloud, Google Classroom. Google. Um, you know, thinking about, not to say that the tool Seesaw. makes it happen, but the tool is the tool that gets gets that learning out there. So. Yep, Flipgrid, mm -hmm. Screencastify, Google website. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. yep, Google website, Storybird, mm -hmm. students share their writing. Yes. You know, collaborative documents. Um, you know, there's lots of, of ways. So, and there's probably ways you've been using, but maybe you haven't used that tool or that, Downward. yeah, that particular thing in this way. Maybe you've used it more just student to teacher, but thinking about ways to invest, yeah, digital portfolios, absolutely, Amy. Um, ways to get them to invest themselves in why it matters, you know, that it's not just checking off boxes or filling in the blanks or things like that. Collaborative Google yeah. Slides, absolutely. Yep. 
So that takes us to this next slide. This next slide um, leans into digital portfolios. And um, thank you, Amy. You just let us right into this slide. So digital portfolios um, are not are not necessarily anything new to our teachers and students. We have been um, really talking about digital portfolios for several years now. It's been something that uh, has been a focus in our county. Um, but they're, they're, digital portfolios are important for students to be able to showcase and share what they know. And again, I'm gonna refer back to this refrigerator art but this is the work that they do that they are proud of. And it goes back to our thinking, um, why are we proud of our work? What are some things that make us proud of our work? And it's really because we've been engaged in the learning, but we are invested in what we are doing. So digital portfolios, um, if you're not ready to bring these digital portfolios yet into your classroom, Certainly the work that your students are saving in their Google Drive is a place that they're curating their work. And now that we're in this virtual environment, um, they have a lot of work in their digital, um, in, in their Google Drives that is just sitting there waiting to be shared out with a larger audience. So just be thinking about um, ways in which students can get that work out to a larger audience um, so that they can really take advantage of that full circle of being a creative communicator. Um, in this slide, there are two places that you can go to if you need more assistance or support in digital portfolios and where to start if you want to start thinking through this in your own classrooms. But this uh, first image is a link to our Wake County digital portfolio website. And then this second image is a link to a, a Canvas course that if you sign up in Wake Learns, you can, it's a self-paced course um, with lots and lots of uh, material in it for you uh, to learn more about digital portfolios. And, um, and then of course, if you want more information outside of these two resources, digital learning coordinators are always available um, to meet with you to help you through that digital portfolio piece as well. I just want to make a side note here too that while um, in the environment that we're in right now, uh, you are all totally, totally overloaded with the amount of work that you're doing. Um, don't forget that your refrigerator art, your professional refrigerator art can live in a digital portfolio as well and should live there eventually. Now, right now you probably um, are so strapped for time you can't get it there, but be thinking, you know, what's important about your job? What is important about the things that you have learned and taught during this extended time? Because this is where it could be a repository for your own um, evaluations uh, for your administrator to look at. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, that's a great point, um, Barb, because uh, even though we're adults, we also can be creative communicators. Right. All right, and so this takes us to our last peak piece to complete that circle of in engagement, creative communicator, and student investment. And this was just pulled uh, from an article by Ed um, Edutopia, and I really liked how in this article they stated this. And I um, pulled out these two pieces in this article to emphasize that engagement, we are often referring to what we do as teachers to affect a positive learning environment. So in, the way I liken it is, um, these are the sort of the bells and whistles. These are all the things that we're trying so hard to engage our students. Um, you know, how are we making that learning environment the best it can be to engage our students? Um, and then if you then step back and think about student investment, we're talking more about how students respond to a task. So we can do as teachers as much um, or as little to engage our students in live in our live meets, in our asynchronous um, independent work, but it's really how, what are our students doing that is where the real investment happens. And then again, just emphasized engagement versus investment.
So I'm going to bring this task back to you as teachers. Could you provide one new opportunity for your students to become creative communicators um, as you're planning your lessons or your units? Could there be one place that um, instead of doing um, the activity you had planned, could you lean into the, communi the creative communicator, um, not to create more work for you, but to create opportunities for your students to do something a little different, to um, be a little bit more creative and to communicate their learning outside of um, maybe just the teacher. So how could you extend your, um, yourself? And then how will you respond? And it's always good when we can um, put the learning back in the student's hands because in the long run, it actually removes some of that, um, the engagement that we think we have to create. Um, it puts that engagement into the, um, into the investment of the student. The student really does that piece of work. And oftentimes they'll come up with things if you just say, okay, um, how would you like to do this? Here's three tools at, at elementary level. You might say, here's two tools, pick one tool and do it that way. Use whichever tool works for you. At middle school, high school, you might say, okay, any tools that you want that are approved for, by Wake County, you go for it. You figure a way to show me what you've learned. It is amazing what they will come up with and they will invest themselves so deeply in that, that they may spend many, many hours creating something for that one piece. So this image just brings us back to thinking about how creative communicator engagement and investment, how, um, how they all go together. Um, all these pieces are really um, part of the cycle that we want to be thinking about and offering our students. So I want to leave with uh, this thought in mind. We're gonna come back to this image. How are we gonna, um, in, our, in our classrooms, move from here to here? so that students are more invested in their learning. So to wrap things up on our slides, we have a resource page for you. Um, all of the uh, resources that I've used in today's presentation are listed here. The articles, the websites, um, the digital portfolio support. Um, we also have on our DLC website, podcasts and newsletters that are full of information. So please check those out as well. Uh, we have upcoming lunch and learns that are already scheduled. And if you have missed any lunch and learns, uh, the good thing is if you go to this link, our lunch and learn link, you can go back and you can watch any of our uh, recordings in your own time. And we have lots of information there as well. So thanks again for joining us. Uh, I think we're finishing a little bit early, so we have time for any questions or um, anything you guys want to talk about. We do have a feedback form, if you could please fill that out for us. We really look at that feedback and making sure moving forward, um, we can provide what you're looking for as well as reach back out to you if you have a question in that feedback form. Um, but we've loved having you here today. And um, thank you, Barb and Annette and any other DLCs that have been jumping in. And I hope um, you were able to spend this time thinking alongside us and just really um, taking something away and hopefully uh, a call to action uh, moving forward.